So you're inside a hyperbaric chamber, obviously you're inhaling and you're exhaling. Well, what do we exhale? We exhale carbon dioxide. So you're actively exhaling carbon dioxide into the chamber. Is that carbon dioxide building up? If it is building up, is that dangerous? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So this is a conversation that we often have throughout our certification courses. It's also a question or a comment that we get on this channel pretty often. Hey, I'm in the chamber, it's a closed environment. I'm exhaling carbon dioxide. Is that carbon dioxide building up? And if it is, is it dangerous? There are a lot of layers to that question, some of which include what type of chamber are you in? What type of breathing system are you using? And what pressure are you going to? All of that is actually very meaningful when it comes to understanding if it's building up and if it's building up, is it becoming dangerous? Okay, so let's divide this conversation into sections. We're gonna talk about what kind of chamber are you in and what gases are being used to pressurize your chamber. And then we're gonna talk about what your breathing system is. And then we're gonna talk about the effect of carbon dioxide at different pressures. So as far as what type of chamber are you in, are you in a soft chamber or a hard chamber? Are you in a static chamber? or are you in a flow chamber? And are you pressurizing with 100% oxygen or are you pressurizing with air and you're breathing oxygen through a different system? What do I mean by a static chamber or a flow chamber? A static chamber would take a certain gas, it could be air or it could be oxygen. It would pressurize that chamber to whatever the treatment pressure is going to be. Air and oxygen would stop flowing continuously. It would get to that pressure and then you can vent the chamber periodically to get some fresh air or some fresh oxygen back into the chamber. Or you can use an additional air or oxygen to pressurize the chamber deeper if you felt like you needed to do that. But in those systems, there's not a continual refreshing of air, meaning as you're exhaling, that carbon dioxide might be building up in the chamber. Contrast that to a flow chamber. A flow chamber, whatever gas is being used to pressurize the chamber is filling the chamber, it's pressurizing the chamber. And once we reach the treatment pressure, instead of that flow of air stopping, it continues the entire length of the session. And it does that because it's constantly refreshing the air and it's constantly refreshing the oxygen inside that chamber. Two benefits of that is, number one, you're constantly getting refreshed air and oxygen. But number two, any other gases that might be building up in that chamber are also being released. In a static style chamber, if they're not being released continuously, there should be a device inside that chamber called the CO2 scrubber. And a CO2 scrubber is a device that would actually help filter out any additional carbon dioxide from building up. In either one of those two chamber cases, there's the awareness that carbon dioxide might be building up and there's a solution for it. In the static chamber, the solution is a CO2 scrubber. And in the flow system, the solution is the refreshing of air continuously throughout the entire treatment. Now, again, depending on what your breathing apparatus is would also make a difference. Some chambers are pressurized with 100% oxygen. And so your breathing system is just the gas that is surrounding you in the chamber. As you breathe in, you're breathing in 100% oxygen. As you exhale, you're exhaling some oxygen and some carbon dioxide. But again, in that system, there needs to be a CO2 scrubber. In a system where there's a mask, but that mask is not necessarily well-fitting, and so it leaks, you're getting oxygen through that mask, but you're still exhaling carbon dioxide into the environment of that chamber. So in that setup, it should be a flow chamber. It should not be a static chamber. And that flow chamber would allow for the refreshing of carbon dioxide throughout the entire session. In a static or in a flow chamber setup, if that mask is very well fitting and it's an on-demand breathing system, or you're wearing a hood, which is similar to an on-demand system in that it's 100% oxygen and whatever exhaled gas comes out actually leaves the chamber. And so there's two hoses. There's a hose that feeds the patient the oxygen that they're breathing, and there's a secondary hose that actually allows the exhaled gases to evacuate outside the chamber so that CO2 doesn't build up at all. So that's a breakdown of the equipment and what the solutions are to try to prevent the increase in carbon dioxide building up. If you like this information, if you find it valuable, please hit the like button, absolutely subscribe. We're putting out new content all the time. YouTube absolutely rewards us by getting more people to find this information when more people are liking and subscribing. So please allow us to help other people as much as we're helping you. Like it, subscribe it, and send this video to somebody that you might think will benefit from it. Now, in traditional hyperbarics, carbon dioxide is considered a bad gas. In fact, when we talk about central nervous system oxygen toxicity, obviously, in order for oxygen toxicity to occur, we need high levels and high pressures of oxygen. 
However, the real trigger for setting off central nervous system oxygen toxicity isn't oxygen, it's carbon dioxide. Oxygen is a vasoconstrictor, carbon dioxide is a vasodilator. And so as you're exposed to high levels of oxygen, you're getting some vasoconstriction to restrict some of the flow of the excess oxygen specifically to the central nervous system. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is a vasodilator. And so if your body's trying to vasoconstrict to protect your central nervous system, but you're rebreathing a lot of carbon dioxide, that increase in carbon dioxide is going to vasodilate instead of vasoconstrict, increasing the amount of oxygen reaching your brain, thereby increasing your risks of central nervous system oxygen toxicity. Now, for the most part, that's something that really happens at pressures of a PO2 of 2.0 or greater. It's really not as much of a concern at lower pressures as it is at higher pressures, but it's still something that you ought to be aware of. And we did an entire video series on oxygen toxicity, so we went into great detail about central nervous system oxygen toxicity as well as pulmonary oxygen toxicity. So please go take a look at those. At lower pressures, as I said, there's a far less concern of that vasodilation creating central nervous system oxygen toxicity. You might even say at mild pressures of hyperbaric, a little vasodilation isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, at lower pressures of oxygen, we might put patients in a red light environment prior to their session because we know that red light is gonna stimulate vasodilation. And that vasodilation will encourage the body or help the body carry more of the extra oxygen that that patient is receiving inside the chamber environment. So not only is breathing a little extra carbon dioxide in a mild hyperbaric environment not dangerous, but there's an argument to say it could even be beneficial as it helps to also vasodilate and encourage increased oxygen flow throughout the body. But again, remember very specifically, I'm saying at lower pressures. At higher pressures, it's not something that should be considered. And getting rid of that excess carbon dioxide is really important for patient safety. So I hope that helps answer some questions around carbon dioxide. But definitely stay tuned to our channel, subscribe to our channel, because soon I'm gonna be releasing other videos that talk about other gases, including carbon dioxide, and what their beneficial effects are going to be. And I think actually carbon dioxide is a very underrated gas, and it's typically only viewed through the lens of a waste product that we need to get rid of. And in fact, there's great reason to say we actually need some more of it. So do stay tuned and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss that video coming up in a few weeks. As always, thanks for your attention, and we'll see you on the next video.